What is your favorite memory of Brian? Um, honestly, I have this picture from, we were never close, never close. And the first, uh, after I was released in 2007, we did a weekend for Hermie Sadler in the Carolinas. Um, and we did like the rock and roll express, some tournament, rock and roll express tournament. And, uh, and Brian, just the very first night, it was over, it was three days long. The very first night he showed up and he was in a bad place. You know, I could smell it on his breath. You know, he just like, he, he was a mess. And uh, by, by the time Sunday rolled around, we had a big fight in the locker room, not a physical fight, just a verbal mm -hmm. argument. And uh, I was like, dude, I don't need this. Like it's, we were just very different people. And we went our set, we didn't speak for five years. And then, uh, and then our very first appearance back uh, after that five years, he pulled me aside and apologized for everything. And, and uh, I, you know, we both apologized. And, um, and then, you know, over that, that the next few years, I felt like we got closer than ever, but I had my, I brought my son. It was me, Rikishi and Brian in the UK. We did a bunch of shows together and uh, I had my son with me and who was like, probably 10 years old at the time. And I have a picture of Brian showing my son Keegan how to use the payphone. It was an actual payphone, you know, and he's putting the coins in and I have a yeah, picture. Yeah. Of it. it's, it's from behind of both of them. But I was like, this is cool. Like, you know, that, that other Brian, like, and to see him work with my son, like he was, he was in a good place. You know, he was in a really good place. He cleaned himself up and, uh, and uh, so, so it was really towards the end that we, we got closer than ever. And uh, yeah, and I also was just kind of taking it, everything with a grain of salt, because he was always late. You know, if we said, hey, let's meet in the, in the lobby at the hotel at one o'clock to go to the show, you know, I'd be down there at one o'clock, no Brian, no Brian, I'd go up and knock on his door. You know, he'd, he'd answer the door like half asleep, but you know, but so like, but it, I just didn't let it bother me as much as it once did. And, uh, you know, it was sad. And I knew, uh, I knew, you know, towards the end, it was, it was getting worse and worse. And, uh, you know, he had to fight with, um, it was the dude from uh, T he had to fight with somebody from, um, one of the TNA original guys. I can't think of his name off the top of my head now. Um, beat him up real bad. Um, you know, and I don't know the whole story behind it, but whatever happened, happened. He got beat up real bad. I saw the pictures of that. And then, you know, he was arrested again. I saw his that last, last mug shot that I saw of him. I knew he was in a bad place, yeah. you know, because Brian always knew that his, whenever he was arrested, he knew his mug shot was going to get publicity. So he would always be smiling. Right. Cause he knew the news, especially in Memphis where his dad was King, like literally like, you know, like he's so famous in Memphis. Yeah. Um, uh, he knew it was going to get publicity. So he would always be smiling or laughing in his mugshot. And that last one, he just looked weathered and beat down. And I just said, man, he's not in a good place. And then mm -hmm. that's when he ended up passing away in jail. You know. So you were never close with him when you were on the road? No, we never, we never, I've always said we never roomed together, but then I just remembered that we did room together at Owen Hart's funeral because the company paid for us all to go out there. So they doubled everybody up in rooms and they just, because we were a tag team, I guess they just threw us in the same room together. But that's the only time that I can remember wow. never rented cars to never him and Rikishi uh, traveled together a little bit. But uh, for me, I was always with Kane or Edge or Funaki. Like, was this just a case of like your personalities just didn't mesh or was there actually issues when you guys were a tag team? No, there were only, we were just different people. You know, he yeah. liked to go out. He was a party guy. I was never a party guy. Um, he, this is, I think part of Brian's problem, and this, you see this happen a lot is he, I think liked Grandmaster Sex Aid better than he liked Brian Mahler. So he liked to live that character you know, 24 seven, you know, we would do shows where he would leave in his gear. Like he would have the two cool stuff on. We'd be sitting in a restaurant like, dude, what are you doing? I'm embarrassed, you know, like, um, but that was, you know, that was Brian. And I think he just, he went down that bad road and, and um, just could never get away from it, you know? Um, hey, it's Chris. And thank you so much for checking out this video on my CVV Clips channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd be so grateful if you could do that right now. Don't worry, the main channel is not going anywhere. We've got full in-depth interviews on the Chris Van Vliet channel. 
CVV Clips is for exactly that, clips from those longer interviews. 